close your eyes and join me in prayer please father lord we come to thy presence once again only to praise you and to give you thanks for everything what you are doing in our lives every day lord we take this time to meditate on your word and we come into your presence to seek thy help to let us know what we need in our lives to let us understand how we need to understand your word by meditating on it properly it is only by your help and by your grace we can do this help us lord in jesus the most glorious name we pray amen amen greetings dear church today i would like to extend what we happened to discuss in our last session in our earlier session hope you remember what discussed what we discussed in our previous session we started a sermon on a topic called when does god bless a family this was our topic and we could not finish this topic because of the time factor today i would like to continue the same and let me recall what we happened to listen to in our earlier session when does god bless a family we all have families and we all expect blessings from god when i say blessings i am speaking about spiritual blessings but not materialistic blessings dear brethren if you want to receive spiritual blessings how your family should be in his sight this is the question what we need to address first in order to get this answer for this important question we chose a family in the bible and it was about obed edom's family there was a person in the history in david's period his name was obed edom this family or his family received the ark of the covenant into their family so happily and then they received the blessings of god abundantly and by the way what does this ark of the covenant or what does this ark of the covenant contain the bible says this ark of the ark of the covenant contained three important items and number one the two tablets of stone which means these tablets were inscribed with the words of god these two stone tablets were inscribed with the 10 commandments this is about which we happened to meditate on in our earlier session and the other two two items were Aaron's staff that had budded Aaron's rod and the next item that was in the ark of the covenant was a gold pot of manna today i would like to speak on this golden jar of manna what is this manna remember this particular family in the history received abundant blessings from god when they happily received this ark of the covenant and this ark of the covenant contained this important item called the gold pot of manna what is this manna what is the important uh, brief history of manna what we have in the bible let me uh, mention this first the whole israelite community when they started from egypt they reached a place called the desert of sin there was there is a desert called sin when they reached there they started grumbling against moses and aaron because they did not have any food they immediately god noticed this issue and he started addressing this issue he called moses and he said i will rain down bread from heaven and all the people are to go out and collect or gather each day gather enough only for that particular day and they are not supposed to gather more quantity than they are supposed to and he started giving instructions and god said in this way i will test all these people whether they will they will follow my instructions or not what is the instruction here the first thing is god wanted to give them food from heaven and he told all the people to gather only enough each that day which means gather enough food only one particular day only one day only for one day but not portion for more than one day and why did he give this he wanted to test them 
He wanted to test their obedience. Remember, church, God tests us and He wants to see our obedience towards Him. God is pleased only when we are obedient enough. This is what we see. We are speaking about blessings for a family. If you want to receive God's blessings, first start being obedient. Whatever he instructs you to be, whatever, whatever he instructs you to follow, you are supposed to follow them. When you break it and still expect blessings from him, that will never happen. He wanted to test their obedience. And he gave them food from heaven. But these people did not recognize what it was. So the question, what is it? They had never seen this food. They had never known this food. So they raised a question, what is it? What is it? In Hebrew, it is manna. Manna. Manna means what is it? Because they did not understand what it was. They did not know what it was. So they named it manna. They called it manna. It was a food God gave them from heaven. It was white like coriander seed and it tasted like wafers made with honey. God fed them with this food. God blessed them with this food in the wilderness. What do we see here? God was the provider for them. God was the source for them to survive in the desert. And the next important thing here is God commanded Moses and Aaron to keep an omer of manna aside for the generations to come to understand or to know the food what God gave their ancestors in the wilderness to, pro, to, to make them survive God was the provider God wanted even all the other generations future generations to come to know about his provision it was a miraculous provision in the wilderness. Remember, dear brothers here, it's not our own ability by which we are earning here. I'll tell you a very important example here. A couple of years ago, a certain gentleman was ruling the state. He was our chief minister. But there were no rains in one year, in a particular year, there were no rains at all. And the government did not know how to run the proceedings with that situation, dire situation. And our government requested the government of our neighboring state to give us some water from their place. There is a reservoir called Almati in our neighboring state. Our government requested that government to give us some water, but we were denied. There were no clues at all for the government how to go ahead. Then suddenly, there came heavy rains without any expectation. All the reservoirs in our, in our state were so full and watchworthy. And we were all very happy with that situation. Even media came to the chief minister and asked him how he was feeling at that time. And the answer was, the answer from the chief minister, from our honorable chief minister was this. Though we have not received water from the Almaty, Almaty is the name of a dam in our neighboring state. 
from which we requested some water and the answer from our chief minister is this though we have not received water from the almighty the almighty has given us some water the almighty has given us more than enough how sensible the statement about god how sensible the statement was about god from our honorable chief minister in the history the recent past it is and he himself confessed and accepted the truth that it is god who provides us with what we need to survive provider and another interesting issue here is after this chief minister another chief minister started ruling out state and there were no heavy there were no rains at all again and the same media came to the chief minister and asked him what the situation was and the same media came to the chief minister and asked him what he would do to address this problem and he said when god himself holds the reins what can i do when god himself holds the reins holds the reins what can we do though we are in the government though we have power here he just said i am helpless he just said i can do nothing i cannot help you out go and pray to god we can find many examples like this if only we are ready to observe our society if you want to receive spiritual blessings for your family remember and recognize and identify that god is the provider he has never left himself without testimony the bible says god never left himself without testimony he has shown kindness by providing and giving rains from heaven and crops in their seasons and providing with plenty of food and filling our hearts with joy we will find this in acts chapter 14 verse number 17 god never left himself without testimony he has given us rains from heaven and give, given us crops in those seasons and provided us with plenty of food and filled our hearts with joy when i say this again perhaps you may raise a question by asking me if that is the truth why is there poverty in the society yes that is a fair question on your part but my answer is remember god is not the reason for the poverty in this world we'll have this we'll ha- we'll be addressing this issue in our future sermons i definitely answer this question in our future sermons god is not the reason for the poverty it is man's selfishness it is man's wickedness that is the reason for the poverty but god is not the reason he is the provider we must be able to understand his provision let's come back to the point the whole israelite community started grumbling against moses and aaron because they had no food then god entered and he provided plenty of food he provided these people with plenty of food from heaven he strictly told them and he strictly commanded them to gather enough only for one day for each person and omer of man not more than that what should we understand here in god's provision comes a, a serious responsibility god tells us to be responsible God tells us to be obedient for his instructions. And what is the instruction here? Gather only an omer of manna for one person. For each person an omer of manna. Not more than that. And he expects you to obey this instruction. 
It's not just getting his provision and it's not just enjoying that. When we receive something from God, we must remember that there is some responsibility behind that. Only on the sixth day of the week, they were supposed to gather two portions because the next day is Sabbath. And the Sabbath day was a day of rest but not of gathering. Only on the sixth day they were supposed to gather two portions of manna. But some people failed. Some Israelites ignored the words of God, instructions of God, and they tried to collect more quantity than they were supposed on the other days. But that manna became full of worms. And some people tried to find some manna on the Sabbath, but they did not get God said, I want to see your obedience. Where is your obedience here? If you start relying on your own decisions, keeping the instructions of God aside and still expect God's blessings from heaven, that can never take place. When does God bless a family is the topic on which I am addressing today. This is the second part. Identify God's provision. At the same time, obey his instruction. Obey his instruction. You want the Lord's nourishment in your life, still you don't expect yourself to be obedient. That's not fair. That can never be fair. Responsible. Be responsible. Being a responsible steward, being a responsible manager of one what is provided with by God is more important than just getting provision and enjoying. And your ability to follow his instructions is more important than just getting provision, his provision and enjoying in your life. Don't tell me that, yes, I have received a lot of provision from God. I'm just enjoying. It's not, it's not enough. When you're ready to say that, I'm able to follow his instructions. When you're ready to say that, yes, I'm able to obey his law in my life then I can say that God, has, God is happy with you. Then I can say that you will definitely receive his blessings. Yes, it is true that God provided them with food from heaven. That is true. At the same time, he gave them a very serious instruction to remember and follow. But some people failed They cannot get God's mercy. People with such nature cannot find the mercy of God in their, in their lives. Speaking about this, I should also mention what God happened to say in his book. This whole episode is found in Exodus chapter 16. Remember, you can read that later. God's providing manna. God's gifting them manna is recorded in Exodus chapter 16. At the same time, the Bible also, the Bible also says, God humbled them, caused them to, causing them to hunger, and then feeding with manna, which neither they nor their fathers had never known, to teach them that man does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord we will find this in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse number 3 it's very important at this point it's very important point at this context Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse number 3 tells us 
man does not live on bread alone but it is a teaching of the devil the devil attracts us to this to these materialistic things always the devil tempts us to rely on this materialistic provisions but remember god caused them to hunger they did not find any food in the desert and they had no options at all before in front of them then god entered and he gave them food from heaven why did he cause them to hunger why did he humble them because he wanted to teach them teach them something which is very essential particularly for each and every person and what is that you need to understand that you can live on every word you cannot live on bread alone it is the word of god it is the word of god that made all this vegetation hope you remember what we see in the first chapter of the book of genesis the lord said let the, let the land produce vegetation seed bearing plants and the trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds and it was so nothing came out of the land on its own it was the word of god that created it was the word of god that created vegetation all the plants all the seed bearing plants and all the trees on the land that 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 bear fruit with seed in it several kinds of fruits several kinds of trees a lot of vegetation all this was created by the word of god that's what we see in hebrews chapter 11 verse number 4 verse number 3 i beg your pardon and the bible also says god makes grass grow for the cattle again god makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate bringing forth food from the earth we'll find this in psalm number 104 verse number 14 God makes grass grow for the cattle but plants for the people grass for the cattle plants for the people remember grass for the cattle plants for the people just let us imagine and try to make it reverse grass for the people and the plants for the cattle If that was the situation how would the how how would the truth be If that was the truth how would the situation be The Bible says God makes grass grow for the cattle but plants for the people If we make it reverse Place people in the place of cattle and place cattle in place of people Then it will be grass for the people and plants for the cattle if that was the situation how would your life be how would our lives be nothing special for breakfast nothing special for lunch nothing special for supper every day you have to eat only one item that is grass grass for lunch grass for grass for supper grass for breakfast Now even on Sunday is nothing special. You cannot ask anybody what's the special today. You cannot offer anybody what he would like to have when they when they visit our house. You have a guest in your house, and your question is, what would you like to have today? If this was the situation. grass for the people and plants for the people that was the case you cannot ask anybody your guest what he would like to have even if he has many questions you don't have you have nothing to offer you've got only one item that is grass perhaps you you are left with you you would be left with only two options one is green grass and one is dried grass there is nothing 
What would you like to have today? Is it green grass or dried grass? That's it. If that was the situation, then we would understand the value of God. Had it been the situation, we would have definitely understood the value of God in our lives. But he has given us everything before we ever ask him. Before we have ever asked him at least to give us what we need today. That is the love of God. This is God's great provision. Dear friends, are we able to identify his provision in our lives and are we able to be thankful for him every day or do we fail to identify this do we fail to recognize this this is a very important question what we have before today what we have uh, to answer be before all of us today Next important thing here is I've shared one thing so far and that is God is the provider for which you have to be thankful. Eating food without thanking God is also a sin according to Psalm number 14 verse number 4 and Psalm number 53 verse number 4. Remember. Eating food without thanking him is also a sin. We enjoy everything what God gives us every day, still we ignore him. That can never fetch any blessing to us. This can never fetch any blessing for us. When does God bless a family? God blesses a family when it does not fail to recognize his provision. A family receives blessings from God when it is ready to accept the truth that God is the real source for their existence and start thanking him. When a family starts thanking God wholeheartedly, For his being source for their existence then this family receives blessings this is what happened in the case of a family of a person called Obed-Edom having said this I must, also, I must also mention one more important thing here more important point here the people of Israel in the wilderness was sustained by the bread that they got from heaven. This was the truth in the Old Testament. Just as the people of Israel were sustained by this bread, by this manna in the Old Testament, so are we Christians are sustained by the true bread from heaven. And who is the true bread here? The Lord Jesus Christ. Let's not forget this. One day the Lord happened to address the multitudes before him. And he said, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you this bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you true bread from heaven. And this true bread comes from heaven and gives life to the world. This was his declaration. Then all the people asked him, Sir, give us this food from now on. Then the Lord said, I am the true bread of life. I am the true bread that the Father gives you today. He who comes to me will never go hungry. He who, he who believes in me will never be thirsty. He who comes to the Lord Jesus will never go hungry spiritually. He 
who believes in the Lord Jesus will never be thirsty. He is our true bread today. He is the one who gives us true eternal life. This is what we need in our lives. No any physical bread can ever give us this eternal life. This is the promise of God. The eternal life is the promise of God according to 1 John chapter 2 verse number 25. If you want to get this eternal life, what do you require? Do you know what you require in order to get this eternal life? You need true bread. This true bread is also God's provision. And the name of this true bread is Jesus Christ. Can you get this food in your life? This is very much available today. This is very much available today. And you are alive. You have not reached your final spot yet. I can say you are blessed because you are getting these words for free. I can say that you people are blessed because the true bread of life is available for you today. I can say that you are blessed because God is ready to give you and provide you with this food abundantly. But you have some responsibility here. When God is ready to give you, are you ready to take it? When God is ready to gift you, are you ready to accept it? Accepting is your responsibility. Taking is your responsibility. Hugging this gift is your responsibility. In this process, never depend on your own decisions. Never depend on your own understanding. Never rely on your own plans. There is no way to heaven. There is no way to get eternal life except the way what God has shown us. Can you trust this truth? When does God bless a family? God blesses a family. When it receives the words of God happily, according to our first episode. God blesses a family when it recognizes without fail that God is the provider at the same time God blesses a family when it also recognizes the true provision of God and that is the Lord Jesus Christ the son of God the only source for the eternal life you can never achieve what you want spiritually by keeping the Lord Jesus aside you cannot ignore him and still expect yourself to be in heaven in future. That will never happen. Let me say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Let it happen in your life. Let it definitely happen in your life. Never ignore. Never neglect. Never start enjoying yourself by keeping the instructions of the Lord aside. That will never be a blessing to you. Enjoy God's blessings, spiritual blessings by keeping all these words in practice. 
when does god bless a family today's sermon is the second part we've already finished the first part in our earlier session and we are left with one more part god willing we'll have that in our next session close your eyes just close your eyes and ask god to bless you that you may be able to understand his instructions that you may be able to follow his instructions that you may be able to identify his provision in your life seek his help let me also pray for this father lord once again we thank you for every word that you have given us and gifted us yes lord it is true that we always fail to understand your provision in our lives it's not this physical food what i'm speaking about all the people in this world have failed to understand and accept your true provision that is your beloved son but we thank you lord for exhorting us today we thank you lord for reminding us of all this truth today we take this time to seek your help lord to bless us and to fill us with true strength that will never ignore your words in our lives we want peace lord we want the peace what you give us not this world gives us fill us with this joy fill us with this peace in jesus the most amazing name we pray amen amen may the love of our father in heaven may the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ and may the grace and also true fellowship of our advocate and helper the holy spirit be with all of us and be with all the true servants of god wherever they are forever and ever amen amen thank you very much for your presence today